So during our many cooking segments over the years, you may have heard me mention that I have issues with certain foods. Not because I don't like them, but because they don't feel good when I eat them. I don't know if you can relate. Sometimes things sit right, sometimes they don't. So I brought in registered dietitian Ginger Halton to, to kind of tell us about a diet called the low FODMAP diet. And I want to know more about it. It's something that's actually, when I've eaten from it, it's helped me. But I don't even know what a FODMAP is, so that's why you're here. I have to say it's quite confusing. Okay, thank you. I feel better about that now. We have to do a tongue twister first. Okay, okay I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. FODMAP. And you only need to know this once because then we're just going to call it FODMAP. Okay. Fermentable, oligo, dye, monosaccharides, and polyols. Sounds difficult. Um, okay, so uh, FODMAP then, in other news. Uh, so what does that mean? Basically, the, the gist of it is there are certain food groups that have a type of carbohydrate that is highly fermentable in your intestines and okay. causes all sorts of gas, pain, and bloating. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so right. when you say low FODMAP, you're eating the low end of the FODMAPable foods. Exactly. There's okay. some foods that have different types of carbohydrates okay. that are digested differently and often better tolerated. But the important thing is not everybody reacts the same way. Aha, uh -huh. see, and that's where kind of I'm at in certain ways. So let's talk about who needs to be on the low FODMAP diet and how do you know? Like, I obviously knew because I was having stomach problems and my doctor was like, low FODMAP for you, kid. And that's such an interesting thing that they pointed that out because a lot of people don't think about it, and, but you have to do it right. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, I don't do it right always. <laughs> well, the low FODMAP diet actually isn't designed to be a forever diet. Oh, it's not. It is more designed to be an elimination diet where you take these foods out oh. and then you put them systematically in one by one and you see, do I have the gas, bloating, pain issues? Did you know that? I didn't know that. Joseph and I were very interested in this because we just, I had no idea. I guess it makes sense. So I keep trying to eat these things that I shouldn't be eating. So listen to your body. You have to listen to your body. It's very helpful to work with a registered dietitian like myself or mm -hmm. a doctor that really knows this kind of stuff. But I'd like to walk through the main categories Let's of FODMAPs okay. because, it, you know, maybe you find out I can't ever eat garlic. I can never eat onions or broccoli, what yeah. I'm hearing you say. Yeah. So you can find certain foods, but hopefully this won't be forever. All right. Copy that. So these are high FODMAP, right? These are classic high FODMAP foods. Um, beans, you'll see my chickpeas. A lot of people mm -hmm. have a really tough time with those. Garlic and onion are some of the top veggie offenders. Do you have issues with those? You know, what's interesting is black beans and pinto beans kill me, but I can do a garbanzo bean. It's just everybody's different, right? That's a really great point. And I should have brought my black beans because it's such a good example. You often know I have a real issue with these, but not these. It's so crazy. Okay, I didn't know apple. Apple is something that I used to eat all the time, but I can't anymore. Apples and apple juice are quite high in the f one of the FODMAP. FODMAPs. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and wheat. So I have my pasta, I have my bread. Often those are not well tolerated. Interesting. So someone could think, what am I, celiac? But in fact, they just can't tolerate it because of the FODMAP it's, stuff in the, the bread. It's a type of carbohydrate. Awesome. Specifically. Okay. All right, got it. And then confusingly, lactose and dairy can be a problem. So I have my milk here and then uh, some sweeteners like honey or like um, artificial sweeteners like in sugar-free gum can be a real problem. Oh, interesting. Okay. So what happens if you are unable to tolerate these FODMAPs? Well, ideally you would take them all out and then add them in systematically okay. and then hopefully you know like oh honey is a big problem or onions are a big problem and then you only have to eliminate certain things not all the things all right okay um so how then do you go to something like this now to this side of the table where we're like all right this isn't working what do i eat then right so fodmap low fodmap diet is very restrictive mm -hmm. and so a lot of times you're like i don't have anything to eat i can't eat dairy or yeah. wheat yeah. or apples or beans so i wanted to highlight over here all the many options you do have okay so we have all sorts of veggies you can have like carrots or part look at this parsnip it's so funny Oh, that's a is, funny isn't that it. wild looking? So, okay, that is yeah. cool looking. Yeah. Um, broccoli and uh, green onions are very confusing okay. because this part, the white part, is pretty high FODMAP. This part is pretty low FODMAP. Interesting. Right. Okay. Same thing with broccoli. The stems 
are often not very well tolerated, this part is going to be better tolerated. Interesting. Okay, so avoid the stems. Maybe that's what I need to be doing. Possibly, but you know what? You don't do well with broccoli, so I think when we build our low FODMAP bowl today, we leave it out because for you, it's okay. not a good fit. All right, okay. I mean, I, I, and I do try to keep doing because I love broccoli. It's like my favorite thing. So let's get started. What do we build? Absolutely. So I roasted some low FODMAP veggies. So I okay. did my parsnip. It looks so beautiful. Um, I did some, some carrots because we know that's low FODMAP. Mm -hmm. And then I did the broccoli the tops of broccoli, but again, you don't tolerate those, so I think we build it without it. Okay, perfect. Yep. So, by the way, as a dietitian, if I keep eating something I don't tolerate, it's not going to change things, is it? It could make it worse. Fantastic. I'd leave it out. All right. Um, there's a lot of grains that are low FODMAP, so oats and just things that aren't wheat, so mm -hmm. I made some rice for us, so that's okay. going to be the base. But the thing that people really struggle with is no garlic and onion, because there's no flavor. Right. So we're going to make a dressing. Okay. So I'm going to do the dirty work, and do you, you know how to use this? Yes, I do. Okay, you're going to do, do the lemon. I got you. Okay. And we're going to make it in this bowl, and I'm going to do this tahini. Do you know what tahini is? I do not know, but I've used it in cooking before, or do I want to, I'll just... Yeah, go, you can go for it. Okay. We'll do it together. I've um, I've used tahini before, but what, I don't know what it's made from. It is made from sesame seeds. Oh, interesting. It's actually the base of hummus, so it's very creamy and high in fat and yeah. really like savory. You can just set that aside. Okay. Um, the lemon offers a really nice, vibrant flavor, and then mm. we're gonna have this creamy base, mm. and then a half teaspoon of salt, if you will. Okay, half teaspoon of salt. All right. Yep. Because we just, you know, you don't need to avoid salt, and especially when you have these really rich um, whole yep. foods. Okay. Um, we're gonna do a table spoon of oil. Tablespoon of oil. So, Got you. Perfect. I'm using avocado oil, but all oils really are, are low FODMAP. You can also do garlic infused oil. Some people do well with that. Okay. Do you want to whisk it up here? You got this. Okay. There we go. And it's whisking beautifully. It yeah. looks very creamy. And is this water back here? Nope, nope. sure not. Sure all right. Isn't. Well, we're going to have not water. And then I wanted to do a little bit of low FODMAP spice. So like, do you like cumin? I do like cumin. Let's do a little bit of cumin. Okay. Should we do a little paprika? What do you oh, think? I love paprika. Okay. It's the luckiest spice in the world. Well, and it's beautiful too. Yeah. So just a little bit. So we're just going to use other flavors. We could use cilantro. We could use our onions so that we brighten it up. Not the onion though, you said. Not the onion. Well, the green onion. The green onion. Okay, gotcha. The tops of the green okay. onion. And there is a confusion about the low fat okay. diet. We Great. have about one minute left. Great. So how let's, do we, do let's we make throw a this bowl. that quickly together? Absolutely. Oh, wow. Okay. So how much rice should we use? Like just like a little base here? That's perfect. Okay. Just go like that. All right. Um, cooked veggies are almost always better. Okay. And I made tofu and greens. So okay. we're going to put some of this so you have a low FODMAP protein and you can actually eat greens. Okay. And then why don't you choose some parsnips and All right. some I'll carrots. All right. this in here. There we go. Boom. Boom. Um, boom. Oh, this is delicious. Well, and then it's so good for meal prep. And then this, this is how I often carry my dressing. Ah. And we're just going to sprinkle it on here for Put you. Put it on there and I'm going to jump on in. And then you have like a savory, lemony, low FODMAP, non-irritating to your gut, lunch, dinner, snack. Mm. That is great, Ginger. That is really so savory and delicious. Thank you so much, my lady. This has been, I have so many more thousands of questions. I'm sure you do too. We might have to bring you back for FODMAP part two. There's a lot to talk about here, but this is a great place to start, and I hope it helps you feel better. It sure does. Thank you so much. Happy New Year to you.